Some Calvados, or perhaps a cognac. What, no slow gin, George? No, no slow gin, George. <laughs> Which one of us was it who made that mistake? According to Madame Maigret, it was you, old chap. Ah, uh, Louise is right, I'm sure. Yeah, uh, Calvados, thank you. I think I'll join you. It's the right sort of drink for the end of a summer's day. And a pipe, I think. Ah, uh, yes, a pipe. I hoped you'd be first. To... <laughs> thank you. Even if it was I myself who gave you the idea of smoking a pipe? Quite untrue, Chief Inspector. Whatever people say. I smoked a pipe before I met you. <laughs> of course, of course. Where did you go? Holiday? Yes. We took the boat round the coastline, all points north, yet again. You enjoy it. One thing I did do was to berth at Ostend for a few days, hire a car and drive home. Home, George? To where I grew up, Liège. Mm. It's always home, is it not, where one grew up? Oh, with me, I don't know. Home. You once had a case, a very strange case, wasn't it, in the village where you grew up? Oh, I did, very strange, yes. Going home. Maigret Goes Home. Translated by Robert Baldick and adapted for radio by Frederick Bradnam. I noticed the sheet of paper quite by accident. Mind you, it had been floating around the Quai des Orfeurs for several days. It was from the municipal police at Moulin, if I remember rightly. You do? It was. It said, for information and possible action to HQ Paris. Beneath this was pinned a piece of squared paper on which was laboriously written, this is to tell you that a crime will be committed in the church of Saint-Fiacre during first mass on All Souls Day. <laughs> a rather ludicrous message on the face of it. <laughs> How long has this been here? What key? Oh, the uh, crime to be at Moulin. No, saint fiac 20 kilometres from Moulin. Oh, is it? I think it arrived three days ago. Oh. Well, when is All Souls Day, anybody know? Uh, is this coming Sunday, Chief, November the 2nd? Ah, I'm glad to know we have one godly copper. Thank you, jean -Vier. It's the day one offers prayers for the pious dead. Yes, I remember that. A crime will be committed in the church. Hmm? I think the Moulin lot think it's a poor joke. Do you take it seriously, Chief? Well, what sort of a crime can be committed in a small church at first mass, Luca? Perhaps a dozen people? Steal a handbag, lift a wallet? <laughs> one doesn't go to first mass with large amounts of money on one. At least so I found. Right, young jean -Vier. No, it'll be a crime against a person. Murder, Chief? I wonder. Are you thinking of going, Chief? It's in the back of the yard. Yeah, I know. I was born in saint fiac Grew up there. My father was steward to the old Comte de saint fiac I can see the great massive chateau now. It frightened the daylights out of me when I was a kid. Have you ever been back then? No, not even to visit the graves. My mother died when I was eight. I left saint fiac when I was twelve. But I think I'll go back on Saturday, Luca, so I can attend the first mass on Sunday. Hmm, the priest and myself, the only man. Ah, there's Marie Tata. When will she remember me? So, I wouldn't have remembered her but for her cross eyes. Ten or eleven other women? For the Contest de Saint Fiacre in the chateau stalls alone. Praying hard enough. Perhaps she has reason? When I last saw her, she was under 30, so she must be almost 60 now. Three masses on All Souls Day. Choir boy Maigret used to have breakfast at the priest's house between second and third mass. Hard-boiled egg and goat's cheese. Do these boys? The young priest now looks a bit of a mystic. Does he fit? Deo gracias. 
Well, the mess is over, Maigret, and where's the crime? Nobody lies dead. The Comtesse still a prayer, her head in her hands. Well, here's the priest to bow her out. Well, she's very still. Oh, damn it! Monsieur le curé! Monsieur le curé! The Comtesse. The Comtesse. Comtesse. Contest. <gasps> no. Oh, my God. <sighs> Lay her on the chairs. Yes, monsieur. All right. I think she's dead, Monsieur Le Carré. Excuse me, who are you? Uh, Chief Inspector Maigret from Paris, monsieur. How is it that you are here? I was visiting. My parents are buried here. Uh, Maigret, of course. Mm. There's no sign of a wound. Monsieur Maigret, you can't mean that... Ah, uh, this must be the doctor. Sorry, I was uh, out shooting in the ponds. Dead, is she? I think so. Anyway, who are you? No, Chief Inspector Maigret from Paris. Maigret? Well, I'll be... The son of the steward? Yes. I'm Bouchardon. I can just remember you as a lanky uh, boy. Monsieur Bouchardon, is the Comtesse dead? Let's feel the heart. The famous Maigret never occurred to me. I wasn't a regular doctor. She uh, went to a colleague in Moulin. Yes. Yes, she's dead. Heart failure, I imagine. She, oh. she had a very weak heart. But I have second mass at seven. Yes, yes, I know. Her car and chauffeur are outside. We'll uh, get her to the chateau. I'll examine her properly there, Maigret. But yes. can I say mass, monsieur? Are you sure there has been no... No crime, monsieur le curé? Indeed. No. The church can remain open. Only a very weak heart. You know, Maigret... This is going to create complications. Doesn't death always? The chateau looks uncared for, run down. Yes, it's not like it was in your father's day. The chateau is mortgaged. Huh? Three out of four farms sold. Antique dealers are, are in and out of the place. Mm. Complications. There's no sign of a wound. Nothing. Not even a prick of the skin. Well, see for yourself. Look, is it necessary? And it wasn't a poison. Sudden heart failure. Wouldn't have taken a lot to kill her. Only a slight shock at, at six in the morning. Oh, cover her up, please. A shock? Yes, a shock. Although I, I can't think what could have given her a shock at first mass. But just now, when we arrived, there was a youngish man in the hall, still in his pyjamas. <laughs> Yes, his world has collapsed. I know. Jean Matellier. The Comtesse is, um, well, let's call him um, secretary. Tell me about things, Bouchardon. The Comtesse was one of those women who were models of good behavior all their life. Then, suddenly, they change. When the Comte died, she was, oh, 40 or so. Maurice, the son, went to Paris to study. She was alone. Since then, the young secretaries have come and gone. Matteye is the latest. Mm. Oh, uh, will, uh, will you answer it? That lot downstairs won't know what to do. Mm. Hello. Is that the chateau? Yes, the chateau. Who is he speaking? The Comte de saint -Fiac. Will you ask my mother to come to the telephone? She must be back from Mass by now. Where are you speaking from? What the devil's that to do with you? Who are you? No, you wouldn't know me, but where are you? Uh, I'm at Moulin. What is all this? It would be best if you came over here at once. I wonder when he got to Moulin. Well, well, well. Quite a reception committee. 
What is all this, Bouchardon? Good morning, Monsieur Maurice. Chief Inspector Maigret, the Comte de saint -Fiard. Good morning, Monsieur le Comte. Maigret? I've heard of you. <laughs> what have I done now? Ah, uh, hello. Look who's here. Up early for you, aren't you, Jean? How are you, you little skunk? I shall be staying at Madame Tapin. Been kicked out, have you? Well, use the side door, not the main one. Oh, uh, do you know my mother's secretary? Jean Matteye, Chief Inspector. No, I was hoping to meet him sooner or later. My name is Maigret. I shall be at the inn, should you want me, Chief Inspector. You won't leave saint Friac, will you? No. Good morning, gentlemen. And I have not been kicked out, Monsieur Maurice. Hmm. My mother... I'm afraid your mother died this morning during First Mass. Poor old girl. What did she die of, Bouchardon? Her heart failed, Monsieur Maurice. I am sorry. A heart attack? It was never strong. Why are you here, Monsieur Maigret? I'm wondering who stands to benefit by her death. Sorry, I don't understand. Her heart failed, you say? Yes, yeah, something somebody foresaw ten days ago. See for yourself. Crime? In the church? First mass? I'll be damned. It's obscene. Take it back, Chief Inspector. Thank you. I was in church. I saw nothing. She didn't rise at the end of the mass, that was all. Poor old girl. I stand to reap some benefit from her death. And that is to be expected, monsieur. I have explained things to the chief inspector. I thought it best. Of course. Did you stay in Moulin last night? I needed to be here first thing this morning, and I didn't want to stay here with that awful little but Him in the house? Mm. Uh, you see, I... Uh, I have a cheque being presented against me today for 40,000 francs, and there isn't a single franc in my account to cover it. Now, I... I was going to ask my mother for a loan this morning. Go up and see your mother, Monsieur Le Comte. She's in her room. Yes. Excuse me. Poor old girl. Poor mama. <sighs> Forty thousand. God, what a mess. Mm, can it be raised here? Well, you can ask the steward, but I doubt it. As I said, it is not like it once was, Maigret, and Gautier, the steward, is not the easiest of men. Well, I'm going to get some breakfast. Yes, I must snatch something and get up on my rounds. You know, Maigret, it, it must have been a heart attack. Perhaps she was tired. Perhaps Mateye was with her all night. Mm, and this message, somehow... She was given a shock. But in church? How, for heaven's sake? Oh, there's something she saw or read. Her book. The prayer book. A missile, you mean? Yes, missile. It wasn't with her when we carried her to the sacristy. Must have left it behind in the store. Uh, let me think, let me think. I was watching her. She took communion, then she knelt with her face in her hands, like this. And then she opened her missile, read a moment, and then her face was in her hands again, as I found her. After breakfast, I must find that missile. Ah, Monsieur le Curé, oh. there you are. Uh, yes, Monsieur Maigret? I've come looking for something. Perhaps you know where it is. Tell me what it is. A missile, Monsieur le Curé, the dead woman's missile. It's in the sacristy. Good. Will you come with me? If I must. Perhaps you'll be so kind as to find it for me. It's there. Hmm? Behind the surfaces. Ah. ah. Thank you. I shouldn't have found it without your help. It would have been better. If I hadn't found it, then better for whom? One evil leads to another. Mm. Every morning she'd come back here, ready to return to the ways of the Lord. But every night at the chateau... Ah, see, here, at prayers after communion. Do you see what's inserted? Uh, Paris, November the 1st. A dramatic suicide took place yesterday in a flat in the Rue de Miromenil, which was occupied by the Comte de saint fiacre 
After telling a friend he was ashamed of the scandalous conduct of his mother, the Comte shot himself in the head and died a few minutes later without recovering consciousness. Hmm. It's printed, you see, as if from a newspaper. A spoof newspaper cutting, Monsieur le Curé. And done on a printing press, but badly done. She read it, and her heart stopped. You're silent, Monsieur le Curé. Did you know this was in the missile? Please do not question me, Chief Inspector. I am under the seal of the confessional. You know who the murderer is, don't you? God knows who he is. Uh, now you must excuse me. I have the sick to visit. Since I'm in the graveyard... The third grave after the cypresses. Flowers on every grave, almost. For all souls' day when you honor the dead. No flowers here. The stone is clean, at least. Here lies Anne Maigret, wife of Everest. And Everest Maigret, laid to rest so long ago. So you've paid your respects. Back to work. There's the steward's house. I think it's time you paid a call on the man. Oh, kitchen hasn't changed all that much, Monsieur Gautier. Oh, you still remember it, eh, Monsieur Maigret? Mm, this polished floor. I always had to wear my slippers in here. I keep this house as well as I can. But the chateau... You'll have a glass of brandy with me. No, thank you. The money's been disappearing all over the place, in all directions. There have been Saturdays when there's not a franc in the safe. I've had to pay the workers myself, and I'm never paid back. You're owed a lot of money, are you? Seventy or seventy-five thousand. <laughs> Madame la Comtesse had no head for business. <laughs> your health, Monsieur Maigret. Ah, and yours, Monsieur Goodyear. Uh, Monsieur Maurice wanted 40,000 this morning. I've no way of raising it, I told him. No way at all. Try the priest, I told him. He will do it for the honor of the Saint Fiac. I told him. Was he successful? He will be. The priest will borrow from somebody for him. There'll be 40,000 in the bank tomorrow, and the court will not be taken to court. He'll have to sell up here. The creditors will be descending like a flock of vultures. I can see no other way. And there's the mortgage. Oh, Emil. Chief Inspector, this is my son, Emil. How do you do, Emil? I'm honoured to meet you, Chief Inspector. Well, you look your father, son. Do you work on the estate? No, in Moulin. In the bank, monsieur. I'm a cashier. Emil is on his way up in the world. Moulin. I went to the lycée there for a few months. I never settled. <laughs> Tell me, Emile, is the journal Le Moulin still going? Yes, monsieur, it is. As a boy, I recalled it as a small, friendly place. People going in and out of the printing shop as they liked. Uh, I don't suppose it's changed, is it? I don't have occasion to go there, monsieur, but I'm told it's an easy-going establishment. Uh, this is a bad business here, Chief Inspector. I'm told you received a warning that Madame la Comtesse was in danger. Well, no name was mentioned. The warning spoke of a crime, that was all. Well, the crime was a joke played on the Comtesse, and she died of it. People who play such jokes should be punished. I doubt if this person ever will be. Tell me, what were Jean Metteillet's duties at the Chateau? Oh, <laughs> that would be telling. Yeah, me. those duties I know of. The Jewish steward looked after everything on the estate, I'm sure, so Metteye spent his days... how? Oh, on one scheme or another to make money, with the Comtesse's money as his stake. The latest thing was some printing process. The steward and his son had the sort of eyes you could never meet. Do you know what I mean, Georges? Cold, unpleasant people. Actually, my dear Jules, 
There weren't many what one may call pleasant people in saint Fiat. <laughs> true, George, true. But the heart had gone out of the place. The way of death for the Comtesse was a symbol, was it not? Mm. I was finding it pointless. Nobody, it seemed, gained a sou by the poor old girl's death. Yet her death had been thought out carefully, with a peasant-like cunning and a peasant-like wish to attract attention and place the blame on somebody. On Jean Metteille, I imagine. On whom else? <laughs> that was obvious. And whoever did it knew the Comtesse pretty well, didn't they? Knew the agony of conscience she was gripped by when in church. And so chose his moment exactly. Did you show the Comte the account of his suicide? I did. I had the feeling that something clicked in his mind when he saw it. I discovered, by the way, that the cutting could have been printed in Moulin although nobody there in the printing shop recalled it being done. You spoke to poor Jean Metteillet, finally, I presume? After a couple of days, yes. I went to the inn run by the cross-eyed Marie Tatin. Many, many years. Ah, there you are, Monsieur Metteillet. I've expected you since Sunday. Oh, I'm sorry. Will you have a drink? No, thank you. I've just had some coffee. You won't mind if I do, I hope. Uh, waiter, rum, please, a little hot water. Uh, tell me, Jean, you don't mind if I call you Jean, do you? No. Well, tell me, Jean, when did you last visit Moulin? <coughs> oh, I don't know, last week sometime. No, no, Friday, the week before. Mm. There's your drink, Chief Inspector. Yes, I know. Mm. Not even the waiter you notice talks to me unless he has to. Did you know I was born here? Yes, sir, I've heard. Mm. Oh, you have. Mm. Oh, the rum's pretty tasteless also. <laughs> you think it'd help being born here? I don't know why you're here. Just stirring things up, they say. They're a suspicious lot. Yeah, so I've noticed, which means they have a lot to hide. No, I'll tell you, Jean. I'm here because a crime has been committed. But you, the Comtesse died of a heart attack. Well, true, there's no doubt about it. The autopsy has confirmed Bouchardon's diagnosis. There's no way of bringing the person responsible for her death to justice, you know. Or rather to judicial justice. But I'd like to discover who he is. Somebody caused her to have a heart attack, is that what you mean? Yes, yeah, sure. Somebody who knew her well knew the state of her conscience, knew her heart wasn't strong, knew she felt a good deal of guilt. No, I did nothing. I swear I did nothing to her in any way. I was very fond of her. Good, yes. And now I'm sure I know who did it. What? Now, I'm... Oh, I almost forgot. You're invited to dinner tonight at the Chateau by the Comte. I think I'd rather not. No, well, it's in order, really, Jean. I think you'll find it interesting. We'll all be there. The Comte, the Doctor, the Priest, the Steward, and Emile, the Steward's son. And, of course, myself, the policeman. And the dead woman laid out on her bed. Indeed, yes. The funeral is tomorrow. Well, then, until this evening. Albert, well, uh, we need some more bottles. With the help of the doctor, I found a will, you know, Monsieur le Curé. The recent one, Monsieur le Comte? Yes. Yes, Boucheron thinks it was made immediately after the heart attack the poor old girl had three months ago. That was after she had a telegram from you. From me, Gautier? From you in London, Comte. You wanted money, as ever. <laughs> ah, well, you see, Maigret, wanting money is a perennial problem with me. Mm. <laughs> I do hope there's enough in the coffins, or coffers, I mean, to pay for the funeral. Mm. I think Emile Gautier will know that, won't you? I cannot possibly discuss a client's account. I right? wasn't asking you to. Just tell the coroner sometime, that's Let's all. See. I shall see that the funeral is paid for. Decent of you, Gautier, although it's probably my money. That's a slander. Did you hear that? Father, doctor... Oh, shut up, uh, Gautier. You're an awful old crook, and you know it. This 
cellar is almost empty, monsieur. The creditors will be annoyed. Uh, the white border for monsieur le curé. Uh, now, your attention, please. Mm. Chief Inspector Maigret has a few things to say to us. Mm. Uh, but no. first, let me say this. Nobody has anything to fear. Monsieur Maigret can arrest no one. It's not a crime in the judicial sense to slip a phony newspaper cutting into a missile, obviously not. However, the chief inspector would like to be sure he's right about who did it. And so would I. And we are all suspects, are we not? We all of us knew that my mother had a very weak heart, that a sudden shock could kill her. I think, monsieur, that you have no idea of the opprobrium you are casting on us. What... Um... A problem. To place in disgrace, Gautier. Oh, oh. I think the Count knows what he's doing, Father. Let us see how it goes. <clears throat> now, let me begin uh, with you, Father. With me? You tried to hide the missile after the death, which is an admission of guilt of some sort, isn't it? Had you anything to gain by the death of the Countess? I don't mean financially, but, say, spiritually. And... And damn my soul for all eternity. Ah, not necessarily. The Countess's conduct was a perpetual scandal and a perpetual challenge to you. Here in the chateau, she was a sinner. The sins of the flesh were impossible to break from, even though she came to church burning with anguish. Now, you're a man of fierce faith, I think, Father. A sort of priest who would go to extremes for his faith. I warn you, the church will well, not... Take your crack of a whip like a good Christian, Father. <laughs> so, at Mass, after she had taken communion, when she is in a state of grace, which won't last, as you well know, you arrange that she receives a terrible shock and dies a holy death there on her knees. She did die in a state of grace, thank God. But I did not cause her death. Well, Albert, fill Monsieur le Curé's glass. Yeah, and mine also, Albert, only I need another bottle. Uh, I'll take you next, Doctor. Uh, it's often the Doctor that did it in thrillers, <laughs> so I'm told. Yes, and in real life also. And let us assume you are interested in the heart and its functions medically, not emotionally. And so to test a theory, you play the trick with the missile. Will a weak heart stand such a shock, or not? Uh, poppycock, Maigret. I've never done any research since I was a student. I, I'm too lazy, as everybody knows. No, no, count me out. Mm. Shall we put the doctor to one side, monsieur? Uh, is this yeah. Yeah. Now, Gautier, you. Huh? There are two possibilities with you. First, you are the model steward. Devoting your life to the chateau and the family, and watching the family money and land disappear under the nose of the heir, and the Countess growing less and less responsible. So you decide to save what is left, not for yourself, but for Monsieur Maurice and the family honor. <laughs> That's a pretty theory for a policeman. As the other possibility is that you're a scoundrel of a steward, who for years has taken advantage of the Countess's behavior. When a mortgage is raised, it's you who take it up, and so on, until you're practically the real owner of the estate. My father is Quiet a meal. Let him finish. Thank you. Now the time has come when the Countess has nothing. Everything will have to be sold, and she will discover it's you who's profited from her stupidity and her trust all these years. Did you, Gautier, think it would be better for the Countess to die before she discovered the truth about you and about poverty? Tomorrow, Monsieur le Comte, I shall resign my stewardship. But of course. Have another drink. A bottle, Albert. Mm. After the father, the son. You, Emile. Mm -hmm. A serious-minded, hard-working chap, I'm told. <clears throat> Your job in the bank, giving you insight to the saint fiac financial position, or non-position. It must have been an agony for you to watch the money that could have gone to your father, if not to yourself, being dissipated by the Countess's so-called secretaries. So you had to put a stop to it. Give the old girl a shock and kill off the Count at the same time. All good, clean fun, but you did have the opportunity, being in Moulin every day, 
of having the printing done or doing it yourself. There is only one of us here who could have had that cutting printed. No, Emil. There is only one obvious person, not only one person, which is quite another story. Well, thank you, Chief Inspector. Why did you want to frame me, Emil? Yes, why did you, Emil? All right, I'll go on. You were very much the dead woman's protégé, were you not, Emil? In a sense, yes. And some years ago, you preceded Jean Metteillet and the others in the position of uh, secretary. Monsieur le Comte, it is sacrilege to speak so of the dead. Monsieur le Curé, sacrilege or not, it's true. That wretched bank clerk was once my mother's lover. Oh. Her first lover. There are no more secrets, Emil. Listen. You were never out of the Countess's affections. And recently you were making an effort yourself to resume your old role. <laughs> I'm not sure why. Perhaps you grew jealous of the hold Jean now had over your Countess. Why kill your benefactress? Because you saw her affections being transferred to her secretary. And being hand in glove with your father, you knew you both stood to lose out badly if the situation was allowed to continue. So you decided to end it and place the blame on the man who had caused the trouble. May I borrow your matches, Bouchardon? Yeah, of course. Uh, <laughs> thanks. Albert, now is the time. You know where it is? Yes. At once, monsieur. I thought the cellar was empty. How are you, Jean Mette? Yes. You were playing a not very amusing role, one which no young man is willing to play for very long. Are you insane? You had made some money from it, and you were. You'd been told, mentioned kindly in your mistress's will. But the contest was sometimes cold to you, and eaten up by guilt. And as the steward's son lurking in the wings, things could change for the worse at any moment in your prospect. So, you thought of a brilliant way to kill. You must admit, Jean, it was the sort of idea an inventive chap such as yourself would have more likely to have had than a bank cashier. Thank you. Yes, only put yourself in my shoes, and maybe you think as I do, but you'd be wrong. What's that mean when it's at home? Oh, I'm sure Chief Inspector Maigret will explain. Mm. You won't, you know. Finally... We come to the heir to these ramshackle fortunes. Your glass is empty, Monsieur Maigret. Ah, I know, Monsieur Maurice. I'll wait until Albert returns. Ah. Now, once before, the Comte had used a trick to obtain money from his mother. The telegram from London saying he was ill, which he wasn't, and needed money, which he did. That worked, so why not try another trick? He got the cutting printed, easy enough in Paris. He came to Moulin on Saturday... And late that night he drove over here, and knowing where his mother kept her things, including her missile, the rest was easy. He didn't mean to kill, of course, only to frighten and soften up. That is why he rang up immediately after first mass on Sunday last, hoping to speak to a, a thoroughly frightened woman, who, when she hears her dead son's voice, is so relieved she promises all the money she can lay her hands on. Bravo, Maigret. I haven't finished yet, Monsieur Le Comte. There is also the possibility that he decided to speed his mother's end with the shock of reading of his death, and such a poignant death, and thereby salvage what was left of things before the Gautier and the secretary gents really made off with the lot. Oh. Ah, thank you, Albert. Place it in the middle of the table, please. Oh, oh God. Oh, grief, it's, it's your father's old revolver. Do you see it, Maigret? Yes, I'm not blind, Bouchardon. <laughs> I'll have some more wine now, please, Albert. Well, Monsieur Maurice, what do you make of my theories? Hmm? Ah, you've made out a very good case against five of us. Hmm. Myself, Jean Mateille, old Gauthier, young Gauthier... Uh, and the father. We, any of us, could have done it. <laughs> and it would be nice to know which of us it was. No, thank you, Albert. Well, does anybody want to own up? Huh? Nobody does, I'm afraid, Maigret. So we come to the revolver. There it is, 
loaded and in the center of the table where any one of us can reach out and take it. It is now uh, five minutes to midnight. By midnight, whoever killed my mother will be dead. I know who it is, and I am not excluding myself. And by midnight, I foretell the murderer will have either taken his own life or have had his life taken from him. Albert, leave just one candle burning. We sat in a sort of drunken tension, with just the one candle and the smoke from my pipe. It was all but dark. I tried unsuccessfully to see how each man was taking it. Silence. But for the wine being drunk from trembling hands and the priest's nervous cough. Then a hand reached out and took the revolver and fired it. <laughs> Albert at once but calmly turned the electric light. Maurice Saint Fiacre lay slumped on the floor. The man who had fired the gun was Emile Gautier. He placed the smoking revolver back on the table and melodramatically held out his wrists to me. He said the murderer would die, didn't he? He wouldn't have had the courage to take his own life. I did what I considered to be my duty. You fired point blank at him. I suppose I shall have to arrest you. Do so. I know he killed his mother. I saw him prowling round the chateau on Saturday night. Yes, Emmy. <gasps> Sure. We oh, had right. quite a meeting, didn't we? Good. And you haven't said what you were doing in the chateau. The, 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 the dead man's on his feet. <laughs> Am I that drunk? You're dead. I shot you. I shot you dead. It was a kid's game, Emile. Bang, bang, you're dead, only you didn't know it. Do you imagine I would let people shoot each other or themselves? The thing was loaded with black. You're not hurt, Monsieur Le Comte. No, Father. I'm sorry to frighten you, but it was the only way. Oh. And with the chief inspector's assistance... I thought I heard somebody moving about on Saturday after midnight. Yes. I came from Moulin in the early hours with the idea of taking some of the family jewels, anything of value, to sell. I'm sorry, but I did. I met Emile face to face in the dark on the stairs. He told me he had just come from my mother's bedroom. He was so smug. He made me feel disgusted with myself. I saw myself as I really was. A man who creeps back to his family home in the dead of night to steal from it and meets on the stairs a man of his own age, the son of a servant, come from his mother's bed, who laughs at him. I took nothing. I turned and went back to Moulin. But after my mother's death, I understood who it was who put that foul cutting into a missile. Chief Inspector? Mm. You knew everything, didn't you, Gautier? What? You and your son have been working together for years, cheating the Comtesse at every turn. One way or another, half the estate is yours. One thing worried you both. There was always the possibility that the Comte would come to his senses, return here, and take up the reins. Then he would discover what you were at, and see to it that the Comtesse revoked some, at least, of her foolish business deals, and get rid of you as steward. Jean Mattei worried you a bit also. His influence over your victim was quite strong and growing stronger. So you decided to stop the poor woman's weak heart and make it look as if Mattei did it. There's nothing you can do to us. Not a thing. I don't know, Gautier. I could arrest Emile for the attempted shooting of the court. Although it'd be difficult to explain my part in it. There's no bloody justice if they get off scot-free. Justice? I don't know. It's a rare commodity. Revenge, perhaps? Do you want revenge, Monsieur Maurice? No. All I want is to start afresh. Get up, Gautier, father and son. Get up. Clear up. If I ever see you again, it will be in the courts, for I intend to fight you for the estate where I can. Go on off of you. Good riddance to bad rubbish. Thank you, Monsieur Maigret. Thank you. You're very good health. And now, if you will excuse me, I shall go and watch over the dead woman. 
If you're not too tired, Monsieur le Curé, will you come with me? <laughs> if I am not too drunk, Monsieur le Comte. But of course. Thank you. Albert, look after my guests for me. After you, Father. No going home for me anymore, Georges. Do you blame me? No, Jules. I don't blame you. The parable of the good steward and the bad steward, wasn't it? For me, yes. I remember my father and the respect people had for him and his honesty. He died worth only a few thousand francs. And I compared him to that greedy old devil who by then owned half the estate. And I felt very old and sour. Did you stay for the funeral? I did. It was next morning, and it poured with rain. The priest had a hangover, as did the count and the doctor, and Maigret, the policeman. Gautier and son cheats to the chateau of Saint Fiacre. They cleared off, did they? Mm. As the funeral procession went past the steward's house, we could see them packing. No, it was an impressive ceremony, hangover or not. I remember thinking, as the coffin was placed in the family vaults. That's my past also being put away. From now on, Saint Fiacre is nothing but history. An important decision. Tell me, Jules, who was it who wrote the letter? Hmm? The one that took you to Saint Fiacre? I never found out. Not that I tried very hard. Uh, Gautier's wife was dead. He was looked after by a plump servant girl. Probably she overheard the plot. Perhaps the old devil talked in his sleep, or the cold fish of a son did, but I think it was her who wrote. Yes, you're probably right. <laughs>